right, greetings. So the results are in for our pick a card for the week of October 13th through October 19th. You are to select from card group number one, card group number two, or card group number three. When you make your selections by Monday, October 14th, you are automatically entered to win our October giveaway, which is announced at the end of the month. Every week that I do a pick a card reading, um, that you actually comment your card selection, your name goes into the giveaway hat an additional time. So for an average month, your name could end up in the hat at least four to five times. So make sure you comment each and every week because it increases your chances of winning. Now I have a couple of very quick announcements. If you want to skip ahead to whichever card group you selected, check the timestamp down below so that you can do so, but make sure that you come back here and listen to these announcements um, uh, either after you watch your selection or you can listen to the <laughs> announcements now because I do share some very important information. All right, so we are still in Libra season this week, y'all. Libra season is still happening. So you know what I say, no matter what sign you are, everybody's a Libra, including you. And so there is wisdom for Libra, excuse me, there's wisdom for everybody during Libra season. Um, and so if you want to know what wisdom and guidance there is for you this season, make sure you click one of the links that I have below to watch my video, everybody's a Libra, including you. Um, I give an overview at the beginning of that video on what Libra energy is all about and um, how it impacts all of us, no matter what sign we are. And then I also go into each sign from Aries to Pisces, explaining what your sign should be focusing on during Libra season. So make sure you watch that video because you want to make sure you stay on top of it. You are so much more than your sun sign. And so in order for you to grow as a whole and complete person, you got to, uh, we have got to learn how to utilize all of the 12 energies, um, uh, with this already within us, you know, not just our sun signs, but all of the energies. All right. So make sure you check out that video. I want to give a shout out to everybody who attended my very first full moon sip and learn on October uh, 13th. We actually had a full moon in the sign of Aries, that fiery sign of Aries is, you know, all about self-awareness and, um, you know, removing roadblocks and obstacles so you can reach your goal and so on the 12th of October, we had, um, in collaboration with Copper Vibrations, we did our very first full moon sip and learn. And so the participants got, uh, free, uh, not free, but it was part of their ticket price, the <laughs> two, uh, complimentary gemstones and, um, a full moon oil. We actually made that together and hence the name sip and learn so you know they got some nice refreshments and all but we learned how to utilize astrology and gemstones and crystals with uh to create ritual that will uh change our lives and help to remove roadblocks and obstacles from our path and to allow the manifest manifestations that we desire for our lives to flow in. So I want to say thank you to everybody who attended that event. And if you were unable to do so, um, that's okay, because we will be doing it again. So, <coughs> excuse me, make sure you stay um, tuned to that and make sure that you are watching uh, my Instagram and Facebook pages where I announce new and upcoming events because the goal is to do a similar event to this every single month. And so you really don't want to miss out. So make sure you stay tuned. My Instagram and Facebook links are down below. Um, let's see. I think that that is pretty much it. Oh, real quickly, always make sure that you click the link below to book a personal reading. These pick a card readings that I do, um, every week are general and open for everybody. So you are not the only one who selected card group number one, two, or three. But if you want a more personalized reading that is suited specifically for you and whatever questions you have for your life, make sure that you click the link um, below to book a personal reading. You can get the Magic of Me Intuitive Natal Chart Reading, where I look at all of the planets in your chart and um, 
help you to have a clearer understanding of who you are, who you are in your life's purpose. Um, I have the mini edition of the Magic of Me intuitive natal chart reading, which is where I just focus on your sun, moon, and rising signs. And then um, I have the general question reading. So if you just have a general question about something going on in your life and you want clarity on, that is um, a reading where we pull cards and um, I can help you get the clarity that you need on that specific question in your life. At that same link, you can also order my book, The Magic of Self-Love, which is a guide to using self-love as a tool a very powerful tool to radically transform your life for the better. And then you can also leave a donation. When you click there, there's access to my um, <clears throat> cash app and PayPal. And you can leave a love offering or a donation in appreciation of this free work that I do. All right, so that is it for our announcements. I really don't have a whole lot to say except for this last little thing. You know, I always tell you that we are all co- we are collaborating together on these readings. There's nothing that I can tell you that um, is not already residing within you. Um, so just understand that we are kind of like working together on these pick a card readings. When you select your card group, just select the card group that most resonates with you, um, that feels most right to you in this moment. You may like a particular stone on, on the top of these cards and that may be what's drawing you to a particular uh, deck or sometimes you may like a particular stone but it's another deck that's really speaking to you. So make sure that you select the group that most resonates with you, the card group that most resonates with you and then just roll with it. Don't overthink it. <laughs> All right. So for real this time, y'all, we are moving forward. We're going into our reading. So those of you who selected card group number one, your reading is up next. All right, y'all. So those of you who selected card group number one, this is your reading. Just in case you skipped ahead and missed our announcements at the beginning, I want to remind you to click the link below to book your own personal reading, to get my uh, book, The Magic of Self-Love, and to leave a love offering or donation if these readings are beneficial to you in any way. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Facebook where I announce upcoming events. We just had our first full moon sip and learn event. And um, if you were there, thank you. Uh, if you missed it, stay tuned because we will be having uh, new events coming up soon. So make sure you stay tuned. All right. So y'all. How y'all doing this week? <laughs> like I just shared, we just had our full moon sip and learn, which kind of inspired um, the stones that I selected for this week's uh, pick a card for October 13th through the uh, 19th. And actually, if you're watching this on the 13th, we are experiencing a full moon in the sign of Aries, which is very, very, um, very, very powerful right now. Um, so the stone that I selected here is a moonstone. Look at how beautiful that is. It's kind of reflective. Um, this moonstone is a stone that is really good for, um, intuition, for really helping you to tap into your intuitive self, but also, um, helping you to deal with your emotional self. You know, a lot of times moonstone with it being, you know, a stone that's very much connected to the feminine energy, to the feminine energy that resides within all of us, whether we are man or woman, um, <clears throat> it gets, you know, it's very much connected to emotion. And um, what it helps to do is help to bring clarity to your own feelings. Because sometimes what you feel is what you feel. Sometimes what you feel is other people's feelings projected on you. And so you want to get clarity on, you know, what you're feeling, why you're feeling what you're feeling. And so this stone, using this stone in conjunction with like a clear quartz or something like that to help you to understand your own emotions is really good. But it's also really good just to help you to get into the flow, to get into your intuitive flow. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, to help you to trust your intuition and to... Um, you know, just to, to be uh, receptive to what your intuition is telling you, all right? So, you know what I always tell y'all to do? <laughs> if you want to know more about Moonstone, Google Moonstone. Just that simple. All right. 
So the card that we have on top of here comes from a goddess energy deck. Some of the goddesses I'm familiar with, some I'm still learning about. But when I shuffle the deck and lay the cards down, I always ask what goddesses have messages for my viewers. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. I'm trying to get my throat together. <clears> throat> the goddess that came out here, I don't know who she is yet because I haven't flipped the card over. But um, I will give my own uh, interpretation and then I will read the information that came with uh, with this card. All right. So. Hmm. Sarah Dwin. I believe that's how her name is pronounced. Sarah Dwin. And she deals with, as you see down here, potential. Hmm. And if you notice here, she has this stone that's hanging above her uh, Ajna or what we call the third eye chakra, which is very interesting because that deals with what we just said with this moonstone, intuition. <clears throat> Having sight beyond sight, ha being able to see beyond what you see. Um, that's what the third eye, uh, one of the things that the third eye really does within all of us. It's like you see with your two eyes, right? But your third eye sees what's not seen. Your third eye sees what's coming. Your third eye sees what um, is, is yet to appear. So that makes sense as to why this connects to um, potential, because it's not something that's here yet, it's something that is on the way. So let's see what message this goddess has for you this week, October 13th through the 19th. Hmm. Wow. You are a child of infinite potential and the Celtic goddess Sarah Dwin is here to remind you of the power that resides in the womb of your heart and the chalice of your mind. Everything you need is coming together right now as if your life's reflection were shining brightly in a golden liquid in Saradin's magical transformative cauldron. Imagine greatness and there will be greatness. Envision peace and there will be peace. Choose love, choose gratitude, and choose faith in the divine magic that flows through you. These are the only ingredients needed for the goddess Saradin to work her transformative mag magic on your behalf. Regardless of the limitations imposed on your world by fate, culture, and conditioning, your true destiny is coalescing on your behalf. You can be anything you imagine. Remember this, dream and trust that everything you need exists to make the dream a reality. This is the promise of the goddess Saradwin. Wow. Wow, it's like what I was saying here with this uh, stone over her third eye. It's like you, <laughs> you have to be able to see the peace, the love, the abundance, the joy, um, the change uh, that you want to see for your own life. And it's through you seeing that no matter what you see with your two eyes. It's through you keeping um, your focus on what the potential that you see possible. Um, it's through that, that, that manifests for you. All right. So that was the empowerment message. I will also read the alignment message and the alignment message is for when you find yourself out of alignment with potential and out of alignment with the message that this goddess has for you. So the alignment message says, when you become complacent in your comfort zone, you run the risk of never moving beyond where you are. Your true potential remains dormant and inaccessible. This may feel like a vague boredom, an envy of others, or an anxiety accompanied by a sense of low self-worth, reinforced by habit or an addiction to, fe to feeling like life will be amazing for everyone else but you. Or in so many cases, it's just been trained into you after generation upon generation of repression and conformity. The goddess Sarah Dwin comes to remind you that it's time to course correct. Your alignment task is to turn this around by releasing all judgment toward yourself and others and reclaiming those dreams you seem to have lost. Write down those dreams and set your intentions. 
Then look in a mirror, imagining that you're looking into Sarah Duane's transformative cauldron and say them out loud as if they have already happened. You are so much more than you allow yourself to be. Only good fortune will come of your growth. Your dreams and cherished desires are important to the, to the divine. The way is simple and profound. Just say yes with gratitude in your heart and the goddess Sarah Duin will lead you to discover your highest good. <laughs> wow. So again, if you're only looking with your own two eyes and you're looking at what your mama had, what your daddy had, what your grandma, your grandpa, your uncles, people you know, your neighborhood or whatever, and you can't see beyond where you are, then what will happen is that feeling of stagnation, of even envy that everybody else seems to, you know, get ahead or get what they want except for you, um, or just a, a complacency in life. But if you use your vision to see the potential of what is possible and you keep your this eye, your third eye on the prize, instead of these eyes on just what's happening in front of you, then the prize that you seek so desperately will come to you and the way will be clear and you'll know what to do, who to talk to, where to go, where to turn um, to change your current situation. All right. So this is a very good card. And like I always say, if you want to know more about, um, any of the goddesses, um, but this goddess in particular, since this is the one you selected, make sure you Google Sarah Dwin. That's C E R R I D Y, excuse me, W Y N. Um, because every goddess has her own mythology, her own story. So if you want to know more about her, Google her. All right. So, Let's go to your next set of cards. The card here on the bottom is your general wisdom and guidance, perhaps where you are right now. Um, and the card that crosses it lets you know what can help or hinder that particular energy, okay? So, oh, this is beautiful. Uh, I like the nine of pentacles. It's one of my favorite cards, y'all. Anyway, <laughs> the nine of pentacles, and it is crossed by the knight of cups. The nine of pentacles crossed by the Knight of Cups. All right. Hmm. This is quite interesting. Okay. Hmm. The Nine of Pentacles is a card of abundance and joy. Anytime we see the nines, we, um, you know, nine is that number right before 10 and 10 is like number one. It's like starting over on another level. So um, the nines, anytime I see the nines, I know that we're dealing with fullness. We're dealing with um, some level of completion or arriving to, you know, um, as high as you can go on a certain level. The nine of pentacles is like the um, coming to a fullness of abundance or the fullness of uh, happiness or joy or satisfaction. Um the nine of pentacles indicates a time when you want to take stock of, uh, with it being pentacles, you want to take stock of your finances, your actual, you know, financial resources, your, and not only finances, but your material resources, like your clothes. I don't know why I'm really feeling this, but you know, we're going into the fall season. If you're watching me from the Northern hemisphere, <laughs> we're going into the fall season. And I've, I've noticed that so many, um, stores you know now are offering like their fall collections and boots and and coats and all this stuff is coming out and you know it's like all these cute fall and winter clothes are, are coming out and it's like time to put away your uh your summer and spring clothes right and it's time to to really to go into your closet and look at you know the clothes that you had even from last season um, and do they still fit? The Nine of Pentacles, though, is a card of, of luxury. So it, like in my mind, it's like I'm seeing, you know, like a new wardrobe or um, dressing really, really well. Like not just, you know, pulling out the old coat and the old scarf and hat and old sweater, but like really, you know, being stylish and, and, and um, fashionable as you change your wardrobe. You know, we are on the change. We, we just changed seasons a couple of weeks ago. And so, you know, it's like bringing that abundance into this new season. 
you know, to not go into this new season, like, oh, it's just a new season, same, you know, same as last season, but really to go into this new season appreciating um, the abundance that's around you. Some of you need to get out into nature and like go somewhere where you can watch the leaves falling. It's so beautiful. Like if you um, can go to like in the mountains or somewhere or just anywhere, you know, where you can watch nature change um change its season and and the beauty of that and how is that reflected in your own life the nine of pentacles is a card of really enjoying the fruitfulness and the abundance of life you know um some of you maybe just need to <laughs> like this is a time of like pumpkin spice everything you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like sip some pumpkin spice coffee or pumpkin spice latte and just you know revel in the luxury of the season the nine of pentacles is a luxurious card um it is about luxury so even if you know let's just say you don't your finances you don't feel that you have the finances to really enjoy um luxury and abundance which sarah Duin tells you like don't focus on what you don't have focus on what is coming and the potential and so this nine of pentacles is like saying like abundance is coming but you have to see it now you have to see it now to appreciate it and you have to see it now even in the smallest little detail that's why i said i was seeing like pumpkin spice latte like that's so uh, you know it, you know that's not the most expensive thing you know what i mean it may not even be something you like or whatever but the point is it's like it's not a regular cup of coffee like it's coffee taken up a notch you know what i mean you know um you know so basically what i'm saying is take your the basic things that you do and experience and and um enjoy in life and take it up a notch because the nine of pentacles is about enjoying the bounty and and adding spice to life adding a bit of luxury adding a bit of appreciation um to life to this season like really revel in that Keep your eye on the abundance that is surrounding you, even if all you can see is the abundance that's in nature. The Knight of Cups, to have this card crossed by the Knight of Cups, again, is like following your heart. The Knight of Cups uh, is the energy of, you know, really being, um, taking action on what moves you emotionally, taking action on, um, being led by your heart, you know, doing the things that you love, pulling in the things that you love. Um, of all of the nights, the night of cups is like the energy of, you know, the man who comes in uh, on his horse and and sweeps you away sort of energy. So, may, you know, some of you may be getting ready to experience like new love. I mean, whether you're a man or a woman, um, it doesn't matter. The point is, you know, some of you may be on the brink of getting ready to experience new love after having gone through a period of time where maybe you didn't think that was possible for you, you know? So if you keep your eye on the prize of, um, actually having a loving relationship, then that is possible because the, the night, the, the nine of pentacles person is all about this knight of cups. She's welcoming in new love, welcoming in um, a new opportunity for that heart chakra to be uh, plucked, <laughs> to fall in love. But even if it's not all about that, fall in love with the season, fall in love with the beauty of life, fall in love with you know, the possibility, the, the new potential and the new um, opportunities that are maybe coming your way. Don't just let things just pass by you and overlook them and not appreciate them. Like really take the time to appreciate the beauty of life, love, abundance, prosperity. Like I said, even if it's just the beauty of the leaves as they begin to change color, the beauty, if you're watching this on, um, October 13th, the day that we're experiencing this full moon, like the beauty of the full moon, you know, um, and really, really appreciating all of the abundance that is surrounding you right now. Love is surrounding you. Um, beauty is surrounding you. Opportunity for abundance is surrounding you. So, t you know, allow yourself to go all in. So let's see what your wisdom card is. <laughs> wow. <sighs> 
Isn't this awesome? Happy, happy. Those of you who selected car group one, number one, y'all made a great selection. But then again, you know what I tell y'all all the time, you know, don't let the cards do all of the work. You have to align to this energy, all right? So it's not about being complacent, like, oh, I got happy, happy, so everything is all good. You are an active participant in this reading, and you are an active participant in aligning to the happy, happy uh, goodness, abundance, wealth, and prosperity that is making itself available to you now. It's still your choice, all right? So let's see what happy, happy says. What wisdom this card has for you this week? Hmm. Happy, happy. Joy and contentment, a sense of fulfillment, a feeling that all is well. Your desires are effortlessly fulfilled now. Find joy in the present moment, whatever is happening, and be satisfied with things as they are. You're free from the shackles of longing and one second <laughs> gotta turn the page okay y'all i'm trying to do all this with one hand you you are free from the shackles of longing and able to experience the liberation that comes from actually being happy moment to moment for you have chosen happiness over yearning for it. Now is the time for feeling joy for the sake of joy and experiencing contentment. None of this is because of something outside of yourself. Your happiness is a result of your being at one with spirit's plan for your life. All is well. The tide is in for now. Enjoy playfully splashing in it. Wow. So, I mean, this really goes in line with what I was saying here with this nine of pentacles. Like there's so many reasons to be happy, so many reasons to experience joy um, all around you. Even if all you can do is is just look at nature and, and enjoy what is happening in nature right now. But take pleasure in even the things that you already have. Like I was saying, your wardrobe. I don't know why I keep seeing wardrobe. Maybe because I need to get some new clothes. I don't know. But it's like I'm seeing some, you know, like some of you like really dressing yourself beautifully. Like don't just be throwing on your clothes this week. You don't know who you're going to run into. Like so you might be pulling in some new attraction type stuff. So you got to look good. The Nine of Pentacles is all about, you know, um... Even, you know, dressing luxuriously, dressing beautifully, you know, and again, that doesn't have to be expensive. It just means, you know, take care of yourself, make yourself look good, you know, put on a little bit of lipstick, you know, shave your beard, whatever it is that you do, <laughs> you know, take care of yourself, pamper yourself. And, and it's not just so that you can be all into yourself just for the sake of being into yourself. But <clears throat> when you do this for yourself, you are aligning to the energy of abundance, of beauty, of prosperity, of, you know, of goodness, of joy, you know, do something really special for yourself. And every single day, I would highly encourage you every single day, do something small, even if it's just five or 10 minutes that is truly pampering again, like enjoy that pumpkin spice latte, latte or, you know, whatever it is that you like, you know, just take a moment to indulge, indulge, indulge. It's okay to indulge and to just be happy and content in the moment. All right. So that is your reading for this week, October was this week, 13th through October 19th. Make sure you click the link below to book a personal reading, get my book, The Magic of Self-Love, and to leave a love offering, also known as a donation, which can be um, accessed through that link below as well uh, through Cash App and PayPal. All right, so until we speak again, I am wishing you all so much peace and love. Enjoy your week. All right, greetings and welcome to the results for group number two, card group number two. Um, I will quickly go over the announcements for those of you who skipped ahead. Make sure you click the link below to book a personal reading. You're not the only one who selected card group number two. So if you want something more specific and catered to you, make sure you click the link below and book a um, general question reading. You can also get the magic of me intuitive natal chart reading and the mini edition of the magic 
magic of me. Also get my book, The Magic of Self Love. And at the link below, you can um, leave a love offering, also known as a donation, um, through Cash App and PayPal. So make sure that you um, click there. Also make sure you comment your card selection by Monday, October 14th, if you want to be in the running to win our October giveaway, all right? So, you have a red moonstone at the top of your card. And this is like red peach. Sometimes I've seen it called peach. Um, but this is like one of my favorite stones, y'all. <laughs> but uh, it, it deals the same way as moonstone in that it helps you to really tap into your intuition, uh, really uh, understand your own emotions, to really tap into your emotions. Cause sometimes we get detached from how we're feeling. We don't even know how we feel. Or we don't even know if what we feel is, you know, our feelings or are we feeling someone else's emotions and we think it's our own. So, um, but the a red moonstone really has more of an active principle to it um, than just the, like this one here is just a, 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 the regular moonstone. Um, so it's more active, meaning it helps to give you even more of that energy to understand how you're feeling and to act on it um in a positive way to not be uh, you know to not to act irrationally towards your emotions but to really act in a way that is positive uh for you and so i thought that this was so fitting because if you're watching this on october 13th you know that we are experiencing a full moon and we're actually experiencing it in the sign of aries the moon is full in the sign of aries and aries is the sign of action and you know, moving forward. And sometimes Aries energy gets the um, reputation for acting impulsively on emotion. And so you want to not necessarily act impulsively, but you do want to take action on how you, on your feelings. And so if you want to know more about this stone, you know what I always say, <laughs> Google Moonstone or Red Moonstone, Peach Moonstone. Whoa, look at me dropping her. And look, I lost her for like a year, y'all. Stones will do that to you sometimes. Like she went missing for a good year and all along she was like at the foot of my bed, but on, it was weird. Oh, look at me dropping her again. So anyway, stones will do that to you sometimes. So anyway, if you want to know more, make sure you Google Moonstone. All right. So the card that is on top of your deck comes from a goddess energy deck. The goddesses have messages for us all, and that's what I always ask when I shuffle the deck before my pick a card readings, which goddess wants to come forth and give you the wisdom for the week. So I don't know which goddess came forth because I don't flip these over until we get started, but um, I will give my own two cents about this goddess, what, what I do know and what I'm feeling, and then I will also read the, um, the information that came with this card, all right? So... Oh, wow. Okay. Y'all, I'm going to try it. Hmm. I'm going to try to pronounce her name. I know a bit of her story, but I don't want to butcher her name. If y'all watched last week, those of you, I think it was last week for card group number three. And I was like, I was saying how, you know, goddesses like all feminine energy, like they want you to come correct. They want you to be able to pronounce, you know, their name. Or at least that's how I feel. Like, I, you know, I feel like they want us to uh, honor and respect them. Wow, this is very beautiful, though. I believe her name is pronounced Nemosine. I really just don't like mispronouncing their names. But she represents the past. She represents the past. Mm. This is a very powerful card, though. Just like, wow, those who got card group number one, the goddess that they had also had a symbol over her third eye. And it's very interesting that we have these moonstones here and, and stones related to uh, intuition because that is what the third eye really represents, that intuitive self. You know, not seeing with your two eyes, but seeing with your third eye, seeing with the eye that sees beyond what is physically present. 
And with her representing the past, she's able to see, you know, not just now, but, you know, what has already come. And so I will read the empowerment message that she has for you this week. And then I will also read her alignment message, all right? So her empowerment message says, there are certain moments within your personal history that hold great treasure for you now. When you examine your memories, which are the domain of the Greek goddess Nemosine, Nemosine, empowered wisdom is revealed. The lessons you find are like sacred talismans contained within your past like fossils and amber. Right now, you can trust your instincts that if something brings to mind your past, it indeed has a kernel of the old and the new. This is an amazing opportunity to make informed choices and do things differently. This goddess has another powerful message for you. There are many choices, excuse me, there are many choice points in life where you have the power to make beautiful changes and become more creative, empowered, and alive. Yes, sometimes memories that live in the cells of your body will trigger palpable fear, but you can move beyond your past to discover new territories and a new vision of freedom will come to you. You won't see the past the same anymore. As wisdom replaces numb acceptance, the memories will change because you've changed. This freedom is gained by willingness and curiosity. Relationships become rich with potential and all your natural choices will no longer fall into old patterns that are not serving you. This goddess wants you to experience this miracle. Wow, that is so powerful because it's not just about residing in the past, being stuck in the past, looking at the past and not being able to get over the past. It's looking at the past and finding the good and remembering the good memories, but also then looking at the past, even those memories that were less pleasing um, to you and looking at the past and being able to see how even that is trying to show up in the future or in your present. But instead of being fearful about it and saying, oh, Lord, here we go again, you know, with this, you know, it's like, OK, now I can make different choices than I made in the past. And even those choices that were not mine from the past. Now I'm older, I'm wiser. I can say no. I can speak my my truth. I can speak. My, you know, open my mouth and use my voice and my words. Like I don't have to accept in the present what I maybe have accepted in the past. So she gives you power over the past. All right. So let's look at her alignment message. And the alignment message is when you find yourself out of alignment with the power that she has for you, this goddess has for you. So it says our stories can hold us hostage to a past that no longer serves us. The goddess of memories, Nemosine, reminds you that running away from painful memories and pretending that wrongs haven't been committed does nothing to help you truly find meaning and purpose. Your alignment task is to stop and take inventory of the past and the stories that keep you tied to it and defined by it. She calls you to be rigorously honest about the areas of your in your life where you have been deeply wounded as well as where you may have wounded others. Dig deep to uncover your unconscious biases and triggers. Know that it may be a messy experience as you surrender to the truth that you can't control the outcome or other people's reactions when you are ready to make real shifts. The world is changing and to be a part of its glorious unfolding, you are being invited to do this deep work. Miracles are waiting for you once you set foot, excuse me, set yourself free and allow your memories of the past to lead you to the truth. Transformation comes with a price. Leaving some of your old self behind isn't easy, but it is necessary to become the one you have been waiting for. Summon your courage. This goddess will help you. You will rise up from the mess and only beauty and strength will remain. So that is just super powerful. Sometimes we get so caught up in what happened to us, who did what, who said what, who hurt us, or let's be real. Some of us have been the ones who hurt other people and we're in denial about it. Well, you know, I only did that because it is. Well, she wouldn't have said this to me then. Well, if he didn't do, you know, and so we justify why we hurt others. But 
whether you are the one who has been hurt or you are the one who has done the hurting, if you don't free yourself from that, then you don't free yourself, <laughs> you know, and then you, then you do become stuck in the past. And so this goddess is really giving you the courage. Those of you who selected this card group, giving you the courage to what actively, what I say about this moonstone is not about, you know, it's not like the regular moonstone, you know, that just deals with intuition, but it's about actively, you know, um, taking action on your intuition and your feelings and your emotions. And so if something from the past is triggering you, how can you resolve those issues in a way that is healthy and allows you to move forward? I mean, even if it's just something as failures from the past or feeling like you didn't measure up because you made mistakes in the past or you didn't graduate on time or whatever, right? What changes can you make now in the present to rectify that past experience, all right? So that that's really good, y'all. That's really good. And I hope that you all can hear and receive that message at this time. So, and like I say, we co-collaborate in this, so you selected it, so you obviously need to hear that message. So please hear and take heed, all right? So this card on the bottom here is like just your general wisdom and guidance. It perhaps could be where you are right now. The card that crosses it gives you insight on what you can do to help or what might hinder this energy here, all right? So the cards that you have received, wow. <sighs> the five of wands, and it's crossed by the ace of pentacles. The five of wands, and it is crossed mm, by the ace of pentacles. Y'all, y'all got my hands tingling. <sighs> the five of wands, mm. Let me hold y'all stone too. The five of wands is a card of drama, of like everybody wanting to be the boss. Every I'm trying not to make that light shine on it like that, but everybody wanting to be the boss. Everybody wanting to be, you know, it's like a leader with no head, you know, and this could be within yourself, like your emotions want to go this way. Your emotions want to go that way. Your mind is over here, but then you want to swing over there. Or this could be just really with the people that you're dealing with. You know, you want to go left, they want to go right. You want to go up, they want to go down. You want to move on from the past. They want to stay stuck in the past. You know, um, it's, it's that kind of energy that actually keeps you from moving forward because there's disorganization in some kind of way. There's chaos. So again, this could be within yourself or this could be you in conjunction with some of the people that you may be dealing with. And again, this may be people from your past or just maybe, you know, somebody, people on your job right now. I don't know. Only you know how to apply this message for your life. But it's like I'm really feeling that, you know, um, the five of wands, again, is like a leader with no head. Like just so the energy is dispersed. It's not, you know, focused and it's not about you know, bringing clarity and wisdom and problem solving. This is like problem creating, you know, or the problem has been created and there's no solution, just kind of going all here and there. That's why I would encourage you all to really tap into the wisdom that this goddess is giving you because it may be something from your past that needs to be cleared up. It may be something um, from in your present that is being triggered by something that happened in the past. And, you, you know, it's like it takes you back into that state of chaos and confusion and disorganization and not knowing which way to go and not knowing which way to turn. The beauty, though, is that it's crossed by the Ace of Pentacles, which is very clear energy, which is very um, specific. The Ace of Pentacles is like opportunity being handed to you. Um, with it being Pentacles, it could be very much connected to um, physical resources, material resources, and even financial resources. So the pentacles deal with the physical world. So it's like bringing order to perhaps your finances, you know, bringing, 
you know, this dysfunction that's here, the Ace of Pentacles could be bringing order to your finances or order to how your finances are utilized and allocated or order um, to how you go about taking an opportunity because it's, it's like this... Mm, these, this energy here is very much asking you, do you want to be stuck in the chaos and confusion and disorganization and not knowing which way to go or repeating, you know, the cycles of the past and getting caught up in the drama or making the same mistakes over and over again? Or will you take this opportunity to, to, to move forward, to advance forward? to um let's just say if in the past you dealt with a lot of lack and limitation and poverty and struggling you know and you perhaps are feeling that right now in your personal life you something is happening that's triggering that feeling of not having enough of struggling you know the ace of pentacles is like but look it doesn't always have to be that way calm down breathe and um, look at the resources that you currently have. Look at the opportunities that are being presented to you. Some of you may be tempted to turn down opportunities because, you know, like this goddess said, uh, if you go back and listen, she said, um, because of generational, uh, you know, some of us may say it like generational curses. I can't even remember exactly how it was written. But, um, because this is just how things have always been done in your family, right? And so you may have a lucrative opportunity or a promising opportunity coming to you, but your, your set point in your brain is stuck on turning down those opportunities in, in favor of struggling, you know? And that's, you know, it seems so counterintuitive, but really, you know, the subconscious mind is, is a powerful thing. And if subconsciously you've been, uh, groomed or trained or, or believed to that struggle has to be the way that, you know, opposition has to be the way that always going through drama and trauma and lack and not enough and arguments or whatever is, is the set point, then you might default to this. So you were encouraged to look at the opportunities that are flowing your way and maybe step out of your comfort zone and do and take opportunities and, and um, chances. You know, like, it's like I just heard, like bet on yourself. Like put, you know, they say always bet on black or whatever, like bet on yourself, you know, put, put invest in yourself or take an opportunity take an opportunity that is promising. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? It doesn't live up to what it's, what it promised. Okay. Well then, you know, perhaps you've already experienced that. So it is not really not that much of a loss. So take a chance on yourself, you know, invest in yourself, bet on yourself, you know, so that your past, you know, the past, um, lack limitation, trauma, wherever, doesn't have to be your future. You're, you are being given an opportunity to move beyond what you've always known and what you've always done. All right. So the wisdom card hmm, that you received this week is a card called no place like home. Hmm. No place like home. Y'all remember that from, um, what was that movie? Uh, that book, movie and book, <laughs> the wizard of Oz where Dorothy is um, clicking her heels together and the, the Glinda the Good Witch is telling her to say, you know, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. And she had to go through so much just to realize that she already had within her what was necessary. Um, so anyway, no place like home. This card says, authenticity, coming home to yourself, feeling at home. I guess that light is going to be on there no matter what. Whatever. Um, arriving at a place where you just fit. Being comfortable in your own skin. Home feels safe and secure. It's a comfortable place to rest and create. A place that is known and you can call yours. This card signals that your ability to trust and feel at home in your own skin is beginning to solidify as you claim your dignity and integrity, aspects of yourself no one can take away from you. You know who you are. You hold your head high, yet with neither pride nor humility. 
Instead, you stand as an observer, seeing through the eyes of your soul. This puts you in a position of power and strength. Authenticity is your home. You are safe here in the house of your spirit and spirit. In the house of your spirit and spirit with a capital S. So, you know, you, those of you who selected this card group, I'm really feeling like some of you maybe have been just so pushed and pulled in your past or perhaps even your upbringing. You maybe just had, whether it was a lot going on in your upbringing or if you just had certain thoughts and beliefs ingrained in you from the past or maybe your past experiences or maybe you've had bad relationships or failures or whatever in the past. And it's caused you to not trust in yourself. It's caused you to lose your um, your ability to trust your own intuition. And so this goddess, you know, that deals with the past is telling you, no, you know, first of all, pull from your past the good that has come and learn from that. Then look at the past. Yeah, it's some of your challenges. And what can you learn from that? You know, and how has the past tried to shape you into who you are now? Now, some of that is cool, but the parts of it that's not cool, how can you change that? How can you transform that so that in your present and future, you don't experience, you don't continue to repeat kind of like on autopilot, the, the drama or trauma or failures of the past, right? So get out of any um, situations, even inner arguments in your own mind. You don't have to be contentious and arguing with, with other folk. I mean, this could be going on in your own head, you know. Um, step away from that. Pull yourself out of that. Don't let that be your default place. Don't let your default place be, you know, always making you know, choices that are below your self-esteem or below your self-worth and self-value, you know, make conscious choices that, that align to your highest self. Um, and then take those opportunities that are coming towards you to advance, to prosper, to grow, to, uh, move beyond where you even, what you even thought was possible for your life. So there's a lot of promise for you this week. You know, you just have to, I think for a lot of you this week, it just has to be very intentional about, um, intentional about your choices. If anything just feels like a default choice, like just, uh, I might as well, uh, you know, no, you know, allow yourself to, to stretch and to grow beyond what you thought was possible for you. All right. So, and that's not just for this week. This may be for some of you, you know, for the weeks to come. All right. So that is your reading for the week of October 13th through October uh, 19th. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you click the links below to book a personal reading to get the magic of self-love. Comment your card selection by October 14th in order to be automatically entered to win our October giveaway. Uh, leave a love offering or donation. And uh, check me out on Instagram and Facebook. Those links are down below as well because that's where I announce um, upcoming events and new products and things like that. So thank you so much for checking me out this week. And until we speak again, I am wishing you all so much peace and love. Thanks for watching. All right, y'all. So welcome. Greetings to those of you who selected card group number three. I will quickly go over the announcements just in case you skipped ahead. Make sure you click the link below in order to book the um, to book your own personal reading. You're not the only one who selected card group number three. So if you want a reading that is more specific and tailored to you, you can book the general question reading. You can also get the magic of me intuitive natal chart reading or the mini edition of the Magic of Me uh, intuitive natal chart reading that looks at your sun, moon, and rising sign. Um, you can also order my book, The Magic of Self-Love, and you can leave a love offering, also known as a donation, um, in support of this free work that I do if it has benefited you in any kind of way. Also, uh, make sure that you comment your card selection on or before 
Monday, October 14th. If you want to be automatically entered to win our October giveaway, um, now the, each week that you comment, your name is added to the hat an additional time. So within a month's time, you could be in there at least four to five times, uh, which increases your chances of winning our monthly giveaway. All right. So that is it for those announcements. All right. So at the top of your, uh, card here, you receive a desert rose, which is very similar to, um, selenite. It's kind of in that same fam family, if you know anything about gemstones. This is a very pretty stone, and it deals with, um, it's very healing. It's very, very healing. And wow, I haven't worked with this one in a while, so I might have to spend some time with it. But um, Desert Rose is very healing. It helps you to, like if you have self-limiting beliefs or um, fears or whatever this kind of ruling you on the subconscious whatever it helps to transform that energy into more powerful energy which now I'm thinking about it might be really good to work in conjunction with tourmaline black tourmaline but whatever that's neither here nor there right now y'all stay focused anyway <laughs> um it deals with uh transforming fear to love and um taking those lower energies that maybe you have allowed to govern you for any length of time you know hate jealousy envy fear irritation frustration I don't, whatever it is and helping you to transform that to a higher level um but it helps also with healing the heart and over you know overcoming certain things from the past so that you can move on to a glorious future wow this is a powerful stone so i keep holding it like this anywho <laughs> that's it for this stone y'all know what i always say if you want to know more about this particular stone called a desert rose make sure you do what google desert rose all right so the card that you have on top of here comes from a goddess energy deck no matter if you're a man or a woman the goddesses have messages for us all and when i shuffle the deck i'll always ask which goddess wants to speak for the week for you so um, when I flip the card over, I don't know which goddess is there. Some of them I'm very familiar with. Some I'm, I'm still learning about. So I will give my own information there and then I will read the information that comes with the card. All right. So, wow. Hmm. You all received Kali. She's a Hindu goddess of liberation and she ain't or this energy for those of you who maybe don't necessarily believe in goddesses in physical form but the energy that Kali represents is is one that is not really to be messed with <laughs> and I say that in a powerful way um I say that in a way that uh really is in a respectful way because I know a lot of times this goddess gets some kind of bad rap which is any any of the female goddesses you know any of the goddesses duh female um any of the goddesses that aren't just all about love and light and sweetness always get like this bad rap but you know energetically you know there's always there's polarities to everything in order to you know in order for there to be creation it has to be destruction and through destruction comes creation you know um there's always this in order to change things right um look at she deals with liberation down here is what's written so even to change and to transform you have to be willing to disrupt what currently exists and so that's why, you know, I know a lot of times people really gravitate towards, you know, all the so-called love and light goddesses. <laughs> but even those goddesses have a, you know, a destructive side. And by destructive, I mean dismantling the, the ability to dismantle what is what is in order to rebuild something new. All right. So Kali um, is is of that energy uh, that demands a kind of respect for the role that she plays in creation. All right, so let's see what this goddess has to say for you all this week. What wisdom, um, you know, why she chose to speak up this week. Let's see. 
So I will read the empowerment message, which helps you to um, know how uh, the message of this goddess is empowering you. And then I will read the alignment message so that if you ever find yourself out of alignment with this energy, how you can get back into alignment, okay? So the empowerment message says, you're being invited by the Hindu goddess of liberation and revolution, Kali, to address the aspects in your own shadow nature that have held you hostage to old ideas that no longer serve who you want to become. You can no longer define yourself by your victim story and expect to succeed in your life. Wow. There is a beauty and liberation that is deep, fierce, and courageous. It rises up from the willingness to break Break the chains of the past in order to transform into something new. You may be afraid to set boundaries with others, but the goddess Kali has come to lend you her daggers, for you must cut ties with the familiar ideas about life that have determined your place in the world up until now. Have you been holding, your, holding back on shining in the world because you are afraid of the reprisal or judgment of others? This helps no one. You must step into life authentic and glowing. Refuse to allow the potential judgment of others to affect you. Every day, claim your power to liberate yourself from caring what others think. When you are asking for the wisdom to live and contribute, to do no harm and to serve for the highest good of all, none of this matters, even if you must tear down what has been built. Wow, didn't I just say destruction? Like dismantling? Okay. Kali will help you whenever you need to be courageous, even when you are most afraid. Be fierce and be loving and be willing to learn. Life will respond in miraculous ways. Wow. <laughs> some of y'all, it's time to let go of some things, some people, some situations, some beliefs, whatever. And Kali's energy is fierce about it. She is not just nice and taking a sweet time. No, she's about it, okay? So some of y'all have to go about it in that kind of way. Again, you know, I ain't telling y'all to do nothing crazy. I'm just saying to be intentional, okay? And don't play around with things that aren't benefiting you and, and, and compromising and and talking about it. And all. If it ain't benefiting you and you definitely know it and you done been through all the compromises known to man, then let it go, let it go, even if it's just a belief system that is keeping you from growing beyond where you currently are, okay? And the alignment message says, when resentment and anger fester below the surface, the unprocessed emotions simmer until they boil over. It's easy to project anger, envy, and ancient inherited rage on others we perceive as the source of our discontent. When something triggers these emotions, we can project onto strangers as well as the people closest to us. Nobody wins when so much pain is unleashed in the world. Take heart, for you are not alone. Know that rage and fury must have a place to be expressed, and you can use this energy to make something extraordinary and find a new way. The fierce liberation goddess Kali offers her daggers to help you cut the ties to stories you tell about your past one, your past once you have expressed and processed them. No matter what your conditions, your alignment task is to find a way to channel this rage, this anger, these feelings into creativity. Make something out of it, of yourself, so you don't create destruction just because you can. Be willing to be teachable even if it feels uncomfortable. When you know more, you can do better. Be willing to take full accountability for the energy you bring to the world. Kali knows the fierce, dark love she brings you will not always be comfortable and the process of transformation requires rigorous self-honesty. You have what it takes. Now make something meaningful and be someone you're proud of. Wow. So she is reminding you to not just use your energy and your emotions to be destructive for the sake of being destructive, right? Because sometimes we, we feel a certain way and we just going to wild out. We're going to tell everybody how we feel just for the purposes of expressing frustration, which is fine. I mean, sometimes we got to let things out. We have to express, but it has to have a purpose. If you're just walking around in rage and showing out and you ain't going nowhere with it and you're still maintaining the ties to the things that have, that cause you to feel that way, 
then expressing that rage and that anger or whatever is still unbeneficial to you because you're not making the changes to keep them keep those situations out of your life. So the goddess Kali reminds us that we all not only have the ability to express how we feel when we don't feel as good as we want, but we also have the power to remove negative energy, thought patterns, people, belief systems, whatever that have kept us in a place that is not beneficial to us. And what was, what did I say about your stone this week, um, the stone that you that's on top of your card deck this week is about transforming. It helps you to transform those, uh, let's just say, lower energies. What some people say lower, you know, like fear, you know, worry, doubt, anger, rage, jealousy, whatever, into higher forms so that it's beneficial to you. Transforming it into love, transforming it into empowerment, um, self worth, self value. So don't become you know, rage and, and or angry and it puts you in a bitter space, use those feelings to transform your life. That is what Kali is telling you to liberate yourself. What's that song, Bob Marley? Um, uh, not liberate. It was um, emancipate. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but yourself can free your own mind. That's uh, his song, Redemption Song. Some of y'all need to just listen to the lyrics of you know, redemption song by Bob Marley, because, it, you know, it kind of speaks to that energy there. All right. So the card here on the bottom is your general uh, message and energy. It could be where you are right now. The card that crosses it helps you to know what can help or hinder the um, card on the bottom. And so, oh, good gracious. Woo. Y'all got to go deep this week. You got the high priestess crossed by the moon. The high priestess crossed by the moon. Two major arcana cards with Kali. This is a powerful week for y'all. Like, I hope y'all ain't playing around this week. Like, y'all... <sighs> this week, y'all really have got to... <sighs> the high priestess. Let me just start there. The high priestess. <laughs> uh, whenever she appears... Um... Mm. Look at her, y'all. I don't know how well y'all can see. She's so solid in her knowledge that is coming from her intuition. Um, you ever meet one of those elders, <laughs> especially like an elder mama, who's wise, okay? Not just any old old person. I'm talking about a wise elder who they just know what they know, man. I mean, and you you be like grandma, great grandma, auntie. Who? How do you know that? And they just be like, child, I can't even tell you how I know. I just know. You know what I mean? That is the energy of the high priestess. It's that deep, deep, intuitive knowing that goes beyond logic, reason, what's written on Google, you know, what uh, Alexa says, what, <laughs> you know, what all the books say. It's just a deep knowing about something. And later on, Google and Alexa and everybody else will catch up. But right now, she already knows. So this may be a great time for those of you who maybe are not already walking in profound wisdom or have trouble trusting your intuition to get around those trusted elders who can guide you on what you need to know, okay? Um, and, you know, but on another note, some of you may already be very in tune to your own intuition. And so the high priestess also deals with um, tapping into your intuitive self, tapping into what cannot be seen, you know, with your own two eyes, but what is known deep within your spirit. Some of you already know the things that you... Mm, some of you already know the things that... Oh God, I can't even get this out some of you already know the things that you should know. Some of you already know the things that you should be doing, letting go of, like Kali says, moving on from. And what is crossing the high priestess is the moon. 
Now, I also love the moon card because the moon, do, yeah, it do, this card does deal with deep wisdom and inner knowledge and, um, you know, seeing what's not seen. But it also deal, deals with those fears that are guiding your life on a subconscious level. So some of you, you're mistaking your fears for your intuition. And maybe that's why I'm saying you should talk to a trusted advisor, somebody you tr like for real, that's trustworthy or trusted elder who can just give you wisdom and guidance because some of you may, perhaps are mistaking your into your fears for your intuition. And so what's happening is you intuitively know something or you maybe intuitively know when somebody or something or a situation isn't right, but you are also being guided by your fears about it. So it's keeping you attached to even the things that you say you want to break free from. Um, and I've seen people who function like this and you've probably seen it too. You ever see somebody who's just, they're so attached to their fears. You know what I mean? They're so attached to what could go wrong with they, you know, I mean, it's like they're prophetic in their fears. You know what I mean? And, and then they end up manifesting all the wrong stuff. They end up manifesting all of their fears, the lack, the limitation, the bad circumstances, everything goes wrong because, and, and they try to say, well, see, I knew that was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. No, you created that to happen. You use the power of your fears to manifest the worst. You know, so that's not prophetic. That's not necessarily intuitive. That's just using, you know, the things that you're afraid of most to keep you tied to the unbeneficial and limiting beliefs that you already have. So you need to ask yourself this week, is my intuition tied to my fears? Like, am I most intuitive when I'm thinking about the things I'm afraid of? You know, am I staying tied to the people, the places, the beliefs, the circumstances that actually keep me from moving forward? And then I use my fears to justify it when it manifests, you know, like you really got to look into that because there's a huge, there's a difference between being truly intuitive and really just being fear-based. Hmm. So some of y'all really need to really need to look into that because you may be mistaking your um your power. <laughs> you know, many of you are very powerful, but you're using it in the wrong way. You're using it to continually manifest what you don't want to keep you tied to situations and circumstances and people that keep you from growing and sometimes mm, it's like it's something I was a way I want to say what I'm what I'm feeling help me um <laughs> sometimes your own fears can be used against you and you're thinking it's because you're so deep and so intuitive and so you know you can see the conspiracy or you can see how, you know, how destructive certain people are or the wickedness of others or the ungodliness of what's going on around you. But it's really keeping you tied to the very things that you say that you're so above. And are you really above it if that's all you think about all the time? If that's, if that's what's keeping you locked in, you know what I mean? Really, is it, are you controlling it or is it controlling you? Um, so, you know, and it's, it's like I'm getting the feeling of someone who, let's just say somebody in a spiritual community who really does have, let's just say, like maybe the church would say a prophetic gift or, you know, um, you know, some other communities may refer that differently, speak on that a little bit differently. <sighs> Some of them, uh, I don't know, somebody needs to hear this. So maybe that's why I'm feeling this. But some, com some spiritual groups, right, love to 
tap into that that spiritual, intuitive, prophetic uh, knowing, right? And you may be a part of that. You may even take pride in that and having that gift. But your gifts should also help to elevate you. So if your gifts are actually keeping you locked into fear, locked into limitation, and I see this a lot with people who are so-called spiritually gifted, they struggle with coming out of the negativity because those spiritual gifts, yes, they, they help you to see, they give you insight on some of the negativity that's going on, but you have that insight so that you can come out of it. You have the insight so you can change it, so you can liberate yourself. That's where I'm going. So you can liberate yourself, so you can advance forward, so you can be empowered to break those chains. But if if not, if you're just prophesying and all deep and intuitive and it's keeping you locked in your fears, you can't ever come up and out, then you need to tap more so into the high priestess in, uh, realm of that, which is which is pure intuitive knowing and spiritual growth and development whether rather than spiritual uh a form of spirituality that keeps you locked in your fears that keep you locked in limitation and some of you mm, some of you may even have people around you that love for you to be all deep and intuitive and they like to turn to you to tell them things and give them wisdom and guidance and insight but they won't like you to stay locked in your fears that way you won't grow that way you won't liberate yourself that way you won't actually move beyond a stagnant place or you know some of you are just like still here spiritually and you need to go here but you can't because you you're thinking that you're thinking that your gift to be able to see all of the wrong in the world or all the negativity or what's about to happen and all this, you know, and some people are, oh my God, some of y'all are just way too locked in, even on YouTube with, with, you know, all of the stories about everything that's, that's going wrong in the world and trying to put a spiritual spin on it. And it's keeping you in this locked, blocked and limited space. Yes, there's a spiritual spin on everything because as above, so below. So I'm not saying that. I'm not doubting that at all. But what I'm saying is if it doesn't liberate you, then it's not benefiting you. And some of you have been stuck in this in this pseudo spiritual space way too long. And it's time to actually elevate to a and, and liberate yourself and then elevate to a truly thriving spiritual space where you're where you can really, really grow where you can really, really grow beyond um, just this fear-based tactics and whatnot, all right? So, hmm, wow. So the wisdom card that you received for this week is time for a nap. <laughs> Which I know when I see that card, it usually does deal with letting go and just chilling out for a while. So let's see what time for a nap has to say. <laughs> Rest, rejuvenation, and renewal. Temporary non-action allowing dreams to arise. This is a time to step away and rest. Let the cares of, of your world go. Go into a state of non-action and, and allow yourself to be free of the shackles of your goals, your list, your desires. Nothing is as important as rest, detachment, and neutrality. The overly busy mind can block you from inner wisdom if you don't step back, take a seat, and rest. Be willing to let dreams surface and ideas flow through you, absent of any force or conscious direction as you observe without engagement now. So really how um, this card is playing into all of this. Yes, Kali is a, is a very active force, but it's active you know, it's a, it's active um, in cutting ties that keep you from growing and keep you in stagnation and limitation. So time for a rest. I'm really feeling like for many of you, it's time to cut out this stuff. It's time to rest from pseudo spirituality, pseudo de depth, you know, that's really just linked to your fears. Some of you are so... Um, some of you have had people play on your fears, 
you know, and then just add spirituality to that to keep you, you know, have you ever been afraid of something? You know, let's just say you're afraid to get on a roller coaster, right? And then um, you, this fear is so strong within you. And then you see a news report of somebody dying on a roller coaster. And then you're like, see, see, that's why I don't get on roller coasters, right? And so what you saw only justified your fear. Some of you have people who are using spirituality to justify your own fears. Like you might have already had fears of let's just say some of dark energy. Some of you may call it the devil, you know, or fears that, you know, something's going to happen or something, you know, somebody's doing something negative to you. And then you add spirituality to it. You add scripture and verse to it. You add, uh, you know, whatever spiritual community that you're a part of to justify your fear or to justify your ill behavior even. Um, like some people even, you know, maybe join spiritual certain spiritual communities because it allows them to engage in certain behavior that um, ordinarily you would be fearful to do, but you really secretly want to do. Like, you know, so, you know, so, but, but adding the spiritual component to it makes it okay, right? So some of you actually need to check and to see if any of your fears are linked to your your spirituality and are you mistaking that for true spirituality and it's time to elevate liberate yourself from that take a nap from that kind of so-called spirituality and actually grow grow in your intuitive self sit around true elders, true people who really can teach you something and can truly guide you in wisdom and not no fake falseness. You know what I'm saying? And then, um, and, and liberate yourself from anything that's holding you physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally tied down. All right. So yeah, <laughs> that's y'all's reading for this week, October 13th through the 19th. This is a powerful week for you all. So I really hope that you listen in and take heed to what I said and apply it uh, however it needs to apply to your life so that you can actually grow. All right. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you click the link below to book a personal reading, get the magic of self-love and to leave a love offering. Um, make sure you also um, comment your card selection by Monday, October 14th in order to be entered to win our October giveaway. All right, so this was great. All right, so until we speak again, I'm wishing you all so much peace and love. Thanks for watching. All right, y'all, so thanks for watching our reading for October 13th through the 19th. Again, make sure that you comment your card selection by or on... Um, Monday, October 14th, in order to be entered to win our October giveaway, click the link below to book a personal reading, the magic of self, um, the magic of me intuitive natal chart reading, the mini edition of the magic of me, or the general question reading. Also get my book, the magic of self love and to leave a love offering, a donation, um, down below through cash app or PayPal. No donation is too small or too big. I appreciate any, um, any uh, donations of appreciation. So thank you so much for watching the reading this week. And until we speak again, I am wishing you all so much peace and love. Thanks for watching.